Forks and Twilight Book Club. We're what the ba- Forks? What, what the, the Forks? We're back. We're back. Uh, this week we are diving into Midnight Sun chapters 8 through 16. But first, ladies, introduce yourselves. I'm Kiki. And I'm Jordan. And I'm Sarah. And together we are... What, what the, the Forks? forks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have some listener comments. <sighs> From this week and emails and stuff that I want to read really quick before we get into it. We love our listeners. We love our I listeners. I love you guys so much. We do this for you. You guys are my best friends and you don't even know it. I know. It's like literally and figuratively. Um, so our first comment comes from Lindsay. Um, and this actually goes back to Breaking Dawn. So mm. I wanted to start here. We're going semi-chronological. Um, she's like, I need to discuss the honeymoon and I'm upset that you guys didn't discuss this. She said, so... Edward and Bella are going to go have sex and get it on and do that. But he takes her to an island named after his mother. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing says I'm going to give you that good dick like an island named after your mom. Like, do you really want to get buck naked and freaky the first time at a place called like Hotel Doug? That's my dad's name. (laughs) Like... You know, are you going to reminisce about the time you had sex at hotel, your parents' name? You know what I mean? So, like, she's like, I'm upset about that. I mean, if I was a Hilton, maybe. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. I never thought of it that way. And my mom does have a very, like, island, you know, her name's Aquanetta. So, like, it's very, like, exotic sounding. But still, if it was like, we're going to go to Isle Aquanetta, I'd be like, we are absolutely the fuck not. (laughs) We are not. I can tell you. So, my mom's favorite musician is Marvin Gaye. Mm Mm-hmm. So all of my life I've grown up like Marvin Gaye and my mom go hand in hand. Yeah. And one time I was hanging out with this guy who had a fabulous record collection. We're listening to records. He put on some D'Angelo. I was like, yes. yes. He put on some Marvin Gaye and I immediately started laughing. And he's trying to be sexy. And he's like, why are you laughing at me? And I'm like, it's not. It's because you think that you're putting the moves on. But all I can think about is my mother. Yeah. So go change this record. Put on some right Tame and Paula and we'll get back to business. You're like right now. Thank you for your <laughs> effort. That's amazing. So, yes, let's see. Yeah, you're uh, right. You're not wrong. Isle Esme is not a... mm -mm. It's not the place I want to get down. I hadn't thought about it like that. You're right, right, Lindsay. You're right. That is a very correct (laughs) note. You're exactly right. (laughs) Jordan, read your fan comment. Uh, I have a fan comment from my friend Lacey. It's buried in my messages, so I can't necessarily find it. But I remember (laughs) buried in my brain. Uh, She texted me as she was listening to our latest episode and she, you know how we were all brainstorming what's the angry music that Edward was listening to? Because it just says angry music. She said, all I can think about is Edward Cullen listening to Cannibal Corpse because it's the angriest band I can think of. (laughs) (laughs) So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That was the winner. Edward was listening to Cannibal Corpse. 1,000%. (laughs) I agree with this. Um, and then we have this amazing email. Kiki, read our fabulous email. Oh, let me let me pull it up. I forgot she's it was my she's turn fabulous today. She's email. like, it's from a lovely lady named Olivia. Yes. And her subject, I don't think I sent this part to you guys, is ah! Oh, so, that's beautiful. That's the subject. Ernie had to adjust my mic. I'm not loud enough for an episode. <laughs> You're like, today? You guys, listeners, the note is always, Jordan, you're screaming. And I'm like, this is it. This is my one volume. (laughs) It's okay. Jordan's just boisterous. I like it. Well, this comment comes to us. It's actually an email from Olivia G. What is up, girl? She says, what is up, y'all? Oh, my gosh. I am obsessed with your podcast. It's phenomenal. Thank you. Um, (laughs) Just a little bit about me. I'm Olivia. I'm 16. I'm infatuated with Twilight. As you most likely can tell, I first watched the movies when I was four. I know, scandal. Ooh, a scandal. Girl. <laughs> but I fell in love and had an eclipse themed birthday party when I was six. <gasps> yeah, I love Girl, that. I would have been so down. <laughs> I need details. Can you send me details? I know. Can we get photos? Photos? Sure. What did the cake look like? I'm so curious. Okay. I know. Sorry. <sighs> I finally caved and read all the books the spring break of my eighth grade year, and I was sent into yet another Twilight Tis. Ooh, we love a tizzy. Ooh, we I love am, alliteration, too. I wow, that tizzy. I am on Twilight Tumblr and Twitter. Wow, alliteration of my right. <laughs> Olivia, welcome to the coven. Oh, my goodness. Okay. 
nonetheless you guys are hilarious and i'm so glad i can relate to you guys in so many different levels from your frustrations and praises of the book to the hysterical jokes you guys crack that make me hold in my laughter (laughs) i'm so happy that i have found a diverse podcast about twilight I enjoy the others I listen to, but hearing it coming from women of color really makes me happy. Yeah. Uh, makes me happy too, girl. Um, <laughs> I struggled with being mixed. My mom is white and my dad is native and Mexican. With being native and Mexican and having a white mom, I envied her. Her is in Bella. Yeah. I always loved, I always wanted to be pale so that I could look like Bella and ultimately a vampire. But I've grown from that and have come to the conclusion that if Bella and Jake would have ended up together, I would look like their kid. And (laughs) and that's pretty dope. Anyways, I'm so happy I got to enjoy my summer with you girls and anticipate Midnight Sun together. Cannot wait for the next episode. Side note, fuck Jacob Black. Pardon my French, Olivia G kisses and hugs girl yes yeah, girl fuck all, the kisses and hugs black. all the kisses and hugs olivia <laughs> fuck jacob black and on a personal just side note it makes me so happy that our women of color or people of color fans are reaching out to us because that's a huge reason why i do podcasts like this and other pop culture work is just that representation matters i yeah. don't see enough people of color involved in fandom or any of that and so that's why I don't care if we have a hundred listeners or one listener. I'm still out there for people. Like, listen, people of color are into this shit. We yes. are. We love it. <laughs> and all of us. And yes. if you guys don't know what we look like, we put this YouTube, these podcasts on YouTube now. We have cameras. So take yes. a peek. I actually put on makeup now and I wear know. like real clothes to this. Because right, our first couple episodes, I was showing up real busted. They can tell you. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Right, we there all no well, try a little bit harder now. <laughs> it is a pandemic, y'all. I right. really don't leave the house. <laughs> no. I, I have on sweatpants today. Um, <laughs> y'all are awesome. And Olivia, you're awesome. Thank you for that amazing email. I honestly uh, read it last night and I sent it to the girls at like midnight. And I was like, you guys. I woke up to it and I shed a little tear. Yeah. I did. I was like, we matter. It matters. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is why we do this. This is, this is why we do this. Talking about what we're doing. Uh, Sarah. About, yeah. So we keep. So we only have two more episodes of our Twilight podcast specific twilight podcast um and we have been asking fans what you want us to read and the biggest suggestion is always <laughs> 50 shades of gray mm-hmm. um i will like make a we, none of us have ever read it so it's not even no, a i have read. oh you have i have did read it. That's why I read it i've read the first two okay the third one i was at that point totally oversaturated because i yeah. read them after they like after the hype Yes. Or like mid hype. I don't know when they were released or whatever. Yeah. I know that I was able to read them back to back to back. Yeah. And by the time I got to the third one, I was literally, I read maybe the first two chapters, couldn't take it anymore, skipped ahead to the end just to see how it ended. Skip to the end. I Because I couldn't take it, but I'll do it if that's what y'all really want. I know. So let us know. Is that really... Is that really it? Are there other vampire books y'all would like better? That, yeah. Please? Please? Let Maybe? us know. Would you like us to continue? Otherwise, in two episodes, we're probably going to take a mini break. Take a little break. A little break. And then we'll be back with whatever the biggest whatever the Whatever wins. Is. I don't know. <laughs> I guess Stephanie Meyer, please release more books. Please, Stephanie I'm Meyer, just put another book. <laughs> I'm um, not ready for the Twilight dirty fan fiction. For the Even if it's a sequel to The Host, I'll do that before I do. <laughs> <laughs> basically awesome <sighs> okay well then let's just dive into the chapters Woo! where nothing happens no, where <laughs> edward <laughs> talks so edward the, just oh thinks God. and talks and feels so chapters 8 through 16 honestly the only thing that happens <laughs> is like him going to save her in port angeles and then they she discovers he's a vampire you know what i mean and then the rest of it is literally edward's inner monologue of nothing which I guess is fair because one of our not complaints but notes about Twilight is that nothing happened. There's no plot till you get to the baseball scene. Right. Yeah. That's so very now true. we have to live through this through Edward's eyes, which is nothing happening. Yeah. Nothing happening and through that, Edward's eyes. And honestly, at this point, Edward's just like a rabid dog. You know what I mean? He's like, this is yes. what I want. He's so honed in. He's like, you know, when like terriers get older and they just like focus on one thing yeah. and they can't unfocus like that <laughs> edward is a rat terrier at this point <laughs> like and bella is edward a mole rat is it, dan from you like yeah he's, like yeah. hello you hello, hello you. you that's why i named it that the last episode yeah. because like that's exactly what it was 
And I was just like, bro. And I also kind of got really tired of every chapter starting with him in the fucking tree. <laughs> Or in, her, or in her, her bedroom. bedroom. So Literally right? eight chapters of him in her room or my, in the tree outside. My I'm very like, first note for this series of chapters is he is such a creepy stalker. Yeah. Because as we said last week, it would have been one thing if he was like looking through the window. Creepy enough. But the fact that he is going into the room, sitting in the rocking chair, getting her blankets, like, what are you like, doing? Witnessing no. every sex dream, because for the some reason, is, Bella has a million sex like, dreams. She's chill about it, though. But there's no... She there's, doesn't know he's doing it he, yet. She doesn't know yet. She, yeah, has, she doesn't know true. yet. She doesn't know yet. There, but there isn't a moment where it crosses his mind, like, I shouldn't be doing this. The whole time. That and is I, the thought that crosses his mind, and he still does it. doesn't stop. Because I can tell you, as somebody who is a very skilled cyber stalker... If you've Same ever been days. on a date with me, I've known everything about you before we've ever met in person. And you're yeah, like, um, like but oh, yeah, what's your auntie Pam? And you're like, shit, shit, I shouldn't have brought up Pam. <laughs> <laughs> but there's always that moment where I'm on my deep dive and I'm looking at his last vacation to, to Tokyo and I'm like, you need to stop. And I shut my laptop and yeah. I do. Mm -hmm. And you do right? stop. He'll tell me if I need to know about yeah. Tokyo. Well, I mean, one of the biggest complaints that the Twilight series, ha or, the, or really, I guess the first book, because it only happens in the first book, yeah. is that people are like, look, Edward's a stalker. He like is in her bedroom. That's really creepy. And in Twilight, like we only learn about him doing it like once or twice. Right? right. But I never thought he was in the bedroom. I never thought I never he was there the whole in the for bedroom weeks. For weeks. I thought he was in the window. I thought he was in the window. I literally yeah. thought he was in the window just like, Hey. Which, like, I don't like that either, but it's oh, no. less weird than him being in, in the, the room. room. Yeah. And, like, wouldn't you, as Stephanie Meyer, <laughs> want to, like, not make him worse and not make him creepier? You know what I mean? Wouldn't you yeah. just keep it to the two? Maybe he popped in once and then, like, you know how Bella has that dream where she like, thinks he's inside. And then, like, mm -hmm. he never does it again. And I'd rather him hang out with his family worried about smelling her I love the this. part where he's like, I'm going to hide in the shadow so Charlie oh doesn't God. see me. And I just, just imagine him, like, in the fetal position, like, like, like an actual vampire. Yeah. Don't look. I was like, what? But yeah, one it of went my notes real far from killing the hobo spider to being a complete creep. creep. Right. And one of my notes in yeah, here is, is I wonder if Stephanie Meyer was just straight up copying and pasting at certain points. Like how much oh, yes, like this, his and Bella's combo? Right. Yes, this is a new book. It's a new book and she definitely wrote it, but how much did she actually pay attention to what she was rewriting? And oh. how much did she just copy paste? I don't how know. much was like, this is my idea and I'm gonna follow it through, and how much um did she decide to try? Did she decide to try and edit and smooth out the story? Because I think there were there's a moment where this the series has been out for ten years, so you can take those criticisms and smooth things out. Yeah, but it's clear that she didn't do that for not some with, of it. Not with that one. She does it for the Bella criticism. Where yes. a lot of people are like Bella has no personality. Right. So mm -hmm. we get what like five chapters it felt like of giving Bella a personality and giving Bella likes and dislikes. Yeah. And I think. That she did a really good job with that. And we kind of said something like this last week where, or maybe the week before, I can't remember, uh, where Bella like talks herself down, right? But now we're seeing yeah. who Bella is through her eyes. So when Bella's talking and telling us the story of her interactions with Edward, of course she's not going to tell us like all the things that she likes and about her yeah. and those conversations because to her, those were not important. They don't matter. Uh -huh. She doesn't matter. But from Edward's perspective, those are everything because yeah. he can't read her mind and he's learning about this girl that he's in love with because he saw a vision of himself in love with her and mm -hmm. or vampires imprint too we don't know whatever thing. yeah something some some shit um i do like that i did learn in chapter whatever the first chapter we're on chapter eight um that vampires apparently have binoculars for eyes oh let me like give y'all a moment to if you hear giant la male laughter boisterous laughter. boisterous male laughter we record our podcast in the neft lounge for neft vodka this is your plug neft um, vodka <laughs> neft and so vodka. there is a meeting going on downstairs and you might hear these gentlemen neft. giggling neft. do they have does neft have a slogan i should know this i don't know does Neft have a slogan ernie unbreakable unbreakable neft well Neft or nothing. Neft or nothing. Neft it is actually or nothing. It is actually really good vodka. It is so good vodka, guys. If you should. are uh, if you are of legal drinking age, wherever you're listening to this, yeah, check it out. See drink if you can get it locally. It's in a few states. Comes in a real cool barrel. Don't ride your brooms or go stalk your girlfriends. <laughs> in the tree, you might fall off. 
Um, <laughs> That's always the plug that we give on Basic Witches when we're reviewing alcohol. Yes, Don't go ride got, your brooms. I love it. Basic, and drink. Yes. Follow Jordan on Basic Witches. It's awesome. You can find it on the Foss book. The Foss book. Um, anyway, that's so enough plugs. Vamp- <laughs> vampires have binocular eyes, apparently. Because like, oh, it was so weird. There are certain things, like more that we're learning about vampire lore or <laughs> like, Stephanie, Stephanie Meyer's Meyer. vampire lore yeah. that I don't get. The binocular eyes was one of them. Yeah, because like she, Bella's like laying in the grass reading, and, and, and Edward can read along with her from the Edward tree. Edward is like computer enhance. <laughs> <laughs> enhance. Enhance. Computer enhance the book. And I was just like, that's so weird. <laughs> what okay. I love, there's a particular line that I loved where he is going back and forth and so he's watching her from the tree she falls asleep she's been reading jane austen whatever whatever one of them Um, Um, and she says uh, edmund and he's like oh she (laughs) wasn't drinking about me she's just drinking about these books that she reads because there's an edward and an edmund she doesn't care about me she just likes yeah. Hugh Grant in a cravat. <laughs> and that was my line. I swear I to God, guys, my next band is going to be called Hugh Grant in a cravat. cravat. Oh, my God. It's going to be indie pop. When I was reading this moment, I was like, um, is Bella about to, like, masturbate? Did anyone I else have, have that, that moment? Like, but apparently she took but a like, nap. It's but that is really not weird. Like, what as, it seems like. As somebody who does faithfully talk in their sleep, like, full-on yeah. conversations. It's never just names. I'm never just laying there going, oh, Edmund. Unless yeah. it is that kind of dream. So, yeah. I don't know, Bells. You, I don't know, girl. girl. I don't girl. know. Uh, this chapter does answer a, a really big question two people had. Like, how did Edward know that she was going to Port Angeles or, like, where she was? Because Edward is a stalker and he knew the he's whole a time. creep. And he's listening to everything. everything. Everyone all and everything. Time. All the time. And he uses um, Jasper's friends as the excuse to go, yeah. even mm-hmm. when Alice is like, they're not going that way. And he's like, I'm still going to go. I'm still going to go just in case something can happen. Something can happen to her. She might like, huh. Um, I also really like the fun fact that the Cullens are also football players. Right? <laughs> so they don't want to see the football baseball. game. Yeah. I was like, yes. Can you go play football with your family and talk out your woes there? I would have rather had and that. And again, we Ugh. find out that Edward Cullen absolutely is the seventh wheel and he's bitter about it. Yeah. Because so he even when he denies the football game, he even says, it won't be even teams if I go. <laughs> Which like Esme is going to referee anyway. So like, yeah, fuck so you, Edward. There you, you should have gone go, football. Edward. We also get so much more of Angela. We get another blue blouse. <laughs> oh yeah, I was like, apparently blue is Bella's. We get color. a blue blouse. Uh, I don't. I have definitely notes about Angela, but yes, in this in this section, we get yeah. more about Angela Weber, who is the sweetest baby angel. Do we want to talk about her right now or share it? Or yeah, save let's it? Like, do it. Yes. Oh my god, because we're gonna skip through like half these chapters. Right? Angela yeah. Weber in these in this chunk of chapters from eight to sixteen, sweetest baby angel alive, just a pure in friend. World. The kind of person that you want. And yeah. there's a line that he says um, that stuck with me. And I even talked about this in conversation this week. I was talking to my mom about other things. Mm-hmm. But he says that Angela is the kind of person that wants what she has and has what she wants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I thought that's just such a lovely way to describe life and your state of living. And yeah. I think how we should all really aspire to be, to want what you have and to have what, what you want. want. I love that. Being so good. Content, content is something that, we all struggle with in life you oh know? yeah and like yeah having a character who is just like they not malcontented generally yeah. like just happy with life like thinks the sweetest things of like her siblings and like you know the people around her yeah that's who we should so all nice. aspire to be enjoy angela. what you have while you're in it yes to angela love you girl he also uh edward makes a comment which i think is hilarious now mm-hmm. that we've read the other books is that he really enjoys being in angela's mind the most yeah but, and we'll get to this later, when he meets Jacob, he says, oh, I like being in Jacob's mind as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like being with Angela. And so, it's like, oh, oh, oh. if you just only wait. knew. Just wait. I and literally I, made well, the note, oh my gosh, him. Jordan, polyamory would have solved everything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, because you know I was going to bring it I up. I mean, he <laughs> likes being in his mind. Yeah. So... so. <laughs> Uh, I love that Edward's family, like the Cullens, are all as over him stalking Bella as we are. Yes, every last Cullen is done with his shit. Yeah, and I think Emmett has the best response. Everyone's like, have fun, whatever. And Emmett's like, you're pathetic. I can't believe you're going to miss the game just to watch somebody sleep. And I was like, thank you, (laughs) Emmett, Emmett. for saying what we're all Emmett is the MVP of this book so far. I'm just going to call it. He just really is. Um, I also like that we learned that Maria is still alive. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. which I never really kind of put together. And that's one thing that I do really appreciate about, about this book. And I think that Stephanie Meyer did make callbacks is that we are learning so much more about the vampires that we will meet later mm-hmm. in Breaking Dawn. Yeah. I thought that was cool that like apparently and like Jasper has seen her. Yeah. Semi recently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and he, something w- happened. When Charlotte and, then- and uh, homeboy, I can't think of his name. I want to call him Joshua. I don't know. Peter. Yeah. Peter when Charlotte and, Charlotte and Peter leave, he does even say like, give my love to Maria. Maria. If you see her. Yeah. I'm like something happened there and I need to know. Right? What. I need to know. This is. These are uh, books that we need. Stephanie Meyer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I need. And then, you know, Edward had support Angelus. And do we really like this whole chapter is exactly the same? Yeah, in my opinion, as far as like he stalks her, Bella gets, sees those dudes. Bella, is, uh, Edward's stressed to find her. Finds her. They go to dinner. The conversation's the same. The only thing that like, I wrote is that the dinner scene was very bizarre from his point of view. Super bizarre, right? Mm-hmm. It's just very awkward and uncomfortable and weird. But <laughs> I guess yeah. I was already fed up at this point. I hate the line, do I dazzle you so much? Yeah. I've always hated it, even from my first read through back mm-hmm. in 2000, whatever year it was. Yeah. And this time they brought it up again, and I was like, Edward's just out here giving people the old razzle dazzle. Yeah. Razzle Give them the old razzle, razzle dazzle. dazzle. <laughs> I did write down, um, here we go, with uh, Persephone and Hades. Oh my God, comments. can I help? Oh my God. And I'm a Laura Olympus fan. Like, so it yeah. took me a second to write I that love. note down, but I did. But I don't need him to say the pomegranate 12. Twelve times, but yeah. so that's what because we said this the pomegranate many many episodes ago. The pomegranate? Mm-hmm. No, why was there a pomegranate on the cover? We were all curious. Oh, the pomegranate. Why was it a pomegranate? Because there <laughs> was an a- shut up, Sarah. <laughs> oh Fuck! God. It took me a minute. You bitch. <laughs> that's oh, how it God. feels to me though. Every time <laughs> he says it. But we were Stop wondering it. several episodes ago why, it why was, it was it pomegranate on the cover of Midnight Sun when there yeah. was an apple on Twilight and the chess piece and the ribbon and the blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then we get here and I'm like, oh, so this is why. Oh, so now you're just going to beat this dead horse and really drive it into my head. Yeah. Now I feel like I should just snap every time I hear the word pomegranate and or a uh, reference to uh, Persephone and Hades. Yeah, exactly. I was like, Lord. Um, if I, you were doing a drinking game, you'd be smashed. Oh, yeah. dead. Dead. Belligerent. It's like, Uber multiple. wouldn't even take you home. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no. but I will say, when I was done reading this part, then a Laura Olympus episode came out, and I was oh, like, here like, we go again. Boom. Mm-hmm. If you haven't read Laura Olympus, it's great. Yeah. Um, I will I'm say, lucky. I did like hearing, we all knew those that guy was like super rapey, right? That Bella was like yeah. against. And I did like hearing it from Edward because it added an extra level because yes. you got mm-hmm. to hear like what he was wanting to do to yeah. her. And then you also kind of got a glimpse back into Edward's like old school ways when he left Carlisle yeah. the first time and like was killing and bad people. Let me tell you, that's a book that I'm interested in because it's, yeah. it's like a combo. It's like if Stefan the Ripper from Vampire Diaries met Dexter from Dexter. Yes. And I am just curious about that. I would like to see it. Um, I think it was a little bit of a missed opportunity in a way though. Cause like, can you imagine if since Edward is like saying, I kill only bad people, rapists, yeah. murderers, blah, blah, to tie that to history. Like, right? wouldn't that have? I think that would have been it really could cool. Be like, fascinating. Could just dropped a little nugget of like some bad person that died and like have right. Edward claim it. I think that would have been kind of fun. Um, there's also a line here where Bella's floating her vampire theory and she's like, oh, I didn't get it on my own, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And Edward says, poor Jacob Black, which <laughs> I just had to laugh at because you're going to take that back, homeboy, <laughs> real fast. Uh, a little nugget that I didn't remember from reading Twilight was like Edward giving Bella his jacket and she shivers because the jacket's cold. Oh, I, I uh, did you low remember that? Remember that? I yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know, remember if that was I don't was think a thing. she makes a big deal about her shivering. She's just kind of like, oh, I was cold and she blows it off. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. um, she's still not sure this at this line? point. She has suspicions, mm-hmm. but she's not certain. She's got yeah. theories. Yeah, she's she got theories. She's got theories. Which is what that a one, the whole chapter is called theories, isn't it? A hypothesis. Um, <laughs> and the one thing I did like about dinner is Edward and, well, slash Stephanie Meyer calls to the table all the vampire canon haters. Mm-hmm. Because Edward says a line of, mind reading was, after all, not a facet of vampire canon. And that's kind of, I feel like, her yeah, middle finger her to middle Edward finger Pierce. Finger to who's like, mm-hmm. yeah. listen, glittery vampires are just... A different take on it, y'all. Just let it happen. Let it happen. Yeah. Let it go. Who cares? Who cares? It's like, are you mad at the Buffy brow? Or right? like, are you mad at Vampire Diaries in their veiny eyes? Just let or it the be crow? Or the turning crow? Turning into? Like, yeah, like that yeah. he only does in the pilot. Oh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and then the finale. It's in the books a lot, okay? Okay. I like that. 
The books I didn't know that. I only read the first one. The books were not as no, good. I read, like, the, the first, show is way better. I read like the first two and I was like, I don't need this. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we get the infamous driving back from Port Angeles yeah. scene. Yeah. Where, you know, like Edward gets that little drop of knowledge that Jacob is Poor related Jacob to Black. Ephraim, though. Like, yeah. you know, he learns like the tribe. I, love, I and, loved reading Edward put two and two together and he's like, oh, yeah. shit, we should have thought of this. And mm-hmm. we didn't. We didn't. But, it's our own problem. And he goes and tells Carlisle, too. And he's like, hey, Jacob kind of told Bella in a way, you know? Like, yeah. And, and he's like, and again, yeah, Carlisle's kind of like, we should have thought of that. It's our own problem. Oh, yeah. well. Oh, well. I mean, the kid, like, obviously, um, Jacob's father believes and knows. He, like, yeah. freaks out when he knows that Edward's at Bella's house. And but Jacob's just like, it's lore. It's, it's a fake yeah. story. It's a rumor. We don't care. It's a rumor. We don't care. And I was like, oh. Well, there you go. I I really like that. I love that Carlisle drug the rapist. We find out. Yes. <laughs> that, I mean, that was a great. I could have just dropped him off at the station. Yeah, that's cool. He just drugs him and drops him off at a police station. I think he deserved more. I was. It was very Carlisle of him to do. It was that. very Carlisle of him, but I loved it. But I was like, okay. You know, I just like that. You know, he was actually a murderer in other states. And yeah. Like, Bella will probably never see this, but it is some assurance that Edward cares about yeah. her and yeah. like wanted to make sure that this person could never do anything to another person. Exactly. It shows that he does have a conscience and he is a good quote unquote person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's not a person. He's a vampire. No. But also again, stories that I would prefer like a, a Carlisle and Edward, like buddy cop series where they're going out. Budgie, buddy vigilante, I guess is a better phrase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I like bounty hunters. <laughs> <laughs> Batman and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like that Edward drops the Volturi early. Yeah. yeah. You know, so we kind of hear that name a little bit. Um, I like that. Sorry. Where am I at? I was like, no, it's where I go. This is where Edward goes back to Bella's house oh, and puts yeah, yeah. a blanket on her. Uh, but I, I kind of love that Charlie dreams about fishing. Yes. <laughs> like, that was one of my favorite parts where he, you know, he can't really hear Charlie. And he's like, He's thinking about something calm and serene and water. Maybe it's fishing. I don't know. Yeah. And that's exactly what it is. It's yes. it. Oh, God. Oh God Charlie's the it. best character ever. Can we please get the book where Charlie gets turned into a vampire? Like, oh, listen, my God. Yeah. Stephanie Meyer, let me plot it. this out for you. <laughs> so, Girl, we'll send you notes. <laughs> yes. Renezme is, like, in her teen years. Charlie's gotten a little bit older. He gets some kind of, like, crippling illness. Carlisle detects it early, and Carlisle is like, yo, we can fix this. And and yeah. Charlie is like, how? And Carlisle is like, need to know. And Carlisle Carly just like, injects him with vampire venom. And <laughs> Charlie is like, what? What is happening now to me? Now he's a vampire and it's <laughs> glorious because that's what he deserves. He can spend all him. his days and nights fishing. I love him. I oh my love gosh, him. he could see the fish. Exactly. He see, yeah. He'd just go to the lake and be like, computer like, enhance. Good job. <laughs> computer enhance. I'll be the world's best fish catcher. Oh, oh my God, God. please. Uh, uh, in, in moving into the next chapter where nothing happens. Interrogations. Interrogations. Chapter 11. Uh, Alice <laughs> continually bugs Edward about letting her be Bella's friend. And I love it so much. Uh, we also learn that as much as we hate Bella's blouses and khakis, it's what turns Edward on. But also, so I love this part. So... <laughs> I don't remember the leaked version of Midnight Sun word for word clearly. I only read it the one time when it was leaked back in however many years Mm -hmm. ago that was. Um, But there was a part that was in the leaked version that has now found new life in this version where Edward's just ripping on Bella's turtleneck where he's like, this ugly turtleneck, you can't even see her figure. I hate it. It's the worst. I I mean, I like it because I won't have impure thoughts, but also I hate it because it's ugly. (laughs) <laughs> I think in the leaked version that happened way, way, way earlier. Yeah. And they've moved it like further in in the book. But I love that she kept that because it's so funny. Yeah. Edward's just ripping on her clothing choices. But he wishes it was like the blue blouse that she was wearing the yeah, other day. Because he's so Victorian. He's still <laughs> so caught in that. Like if he can see her ankle, he is like, oh shit, yeah, y'all. She showed an ankle. She is Look showing an ankle. <laughs> oh, did you see that collarbone right? popping? He don't need to bussy. He's got that ankle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love because we're ha- this is now the conversation when they're in the cafeteria. Edward eats food, says it tastes like dirt. But I think all the outside stuff is the star of the scene with how angry Rosalie is. Yes. And she's ready to break shit. And Edward's like, man, my Aston Mar- Martin's not going to make it. Right. I'm in yeah. trouble I'm now. I'm in trouble now. Um, the, he also has a line about Angela in this chapter that I love where he goes, 
She must desire some bobble or toy. Yes. <laughs> I can provide it for her. I like that he's trying I to gift her for like, being a good friend. Yeah. Right? Like, it's I so love, old school and ridiculous. But like, old school gifts and ridiculous, her a but boyfriend. Like, also, Edward's love language must be gift giving. So I think this is just beautiful. And he's like... <laughs> And it's so, again, back to his Victorian yeah. age, it's like a bobble or a toy. Listen, Edward, I'm a nice person. Here's my Amazon wish list. Yeah. <laughs> there are several baubles and toys on it. I love it. And wouldn't it be uh, nice if someone just bought your whole Amazon wish list and you didn't even know who it was from? Oh, God. Oh, and yeah. it was just like Edward calling you I would nice. go out to the mail that day and be the happiest person in the world. I know. I would have to do an unboxing video and I'd be like, y'all, I don't know what I did to deserve this, but here it is. But here it is. <laughs> I'm a good friend. Uh, I was going to go on a rant, but then it was kind of dirty, so I just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm getting debussy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> he has to choke the food back up, which I had never thought of until oh, they yeah. said. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, that's, got, I mean, it's logical, but also hilarious that yeah, at yeah, some great. point he's going to have to just, because do vampires that. don't dookie. So like, right, what is so he going to do like, with it? Vomit it up, yeah. I guess. I was worried about the blood too, because they don't pee. So like, does it just absorb into their body? I think so. Yeah. I think it just absorbs into their organs just or like something. Just but like, around. Yeah. But um, they don't eat food. It just reminds me of a, you know, when your dog like has a hairball or something else. And your dog starts coughing. That's what I pictured. Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, oh, don't, <laughs> not on my rug, right? Because you <laughs> know they always go to the carpet. Oh yeah, dogs Bastards. always go to the carpet, and it takes them thirty minutes. It happens in slow motion. You're just yeah. watching them for thirty five minutes, and you're like, can you not on the carpet? Yeah. Oh, am I the only one that didn't think that Emmett was from 1935? No, I didn't think. I, no, I knew, I knew, I knew that he younger. had to be recent. He was recent, but I didn't think it was 30s. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought like, it was like the, the 50s or 60s. 60s. Yeah. Oh. I didn't think that he was that close in age to Edward in like real age, you know? Oh, okay. I, I was uh, like, I did math and he's like, you know, he's in his 70s. And I was like, he's in his 70s. And I did the math on it. I was like, that would have been 1935. Well, I, I figured that Rosalie hadn't been alone that long was my idea. Oh, fair. So yeah. that was, and she got turned in the, like 20s. the 20s. So and I you knew said that two years after. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was, was kind like, of my deal. What? Uh, but at, by the end of this conversation, I was like sitting there, and honestly, if I was Bella, and I hadn't seen Edward move quickly around the car, because at this point, that's yeah. what she's seen. I would just think that Edward was that weird goth kid in high school that thinks he's a vampire. Oh yeah, for sure. And, so and the one who yes, he hisses at people in the hallway. <laughs> And he's just like, I'm a vampire. I drink blood. Oh, but we don't do that. Oh, but we do this. Oh, I'll show you what my skin. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And that, so that was a note that I had where I was like, Bella takes all of this way too easily. In stride, from man. his point of view. From her Hers. point of view, you get all the weird thoughts that she's having and the yes. yes or the no and the conflict. But from his point of view, she's just like, all right, I guess. Like, yeah. I don't, there's no reason for her to believe it from his point like, of view. It seems disturbed. very odd. It's very strange. Yeah. I was like, she's okay. just like overall accepting. Like, I know you're different, but like in my head, I'm also like, I'd be like, oh, so drink that squirrel then. Like, right? <laughs> right. Or I'd be LARPing with him and I'd be like, oh, you're a vampire? Well, I'm a necromancer. Like, uh-huh. I don't know. I'd be like yeah. doing some weird shit too. Like whatever um, um and then we had to class well there's a great oh, there's a great callback line at some point where she says that she's not telling charlie that she goes fishing uh-huh. and he says well why not and she says well with charlie less is always more and i thought that was such a great having just finished breaking dawn it was such yeah. a great callback because need to know need, to, need know. to know i love it um and i think we should just call edward the matchmaker I, I wrote Edward Cullen matchmaker. I did. That's my he's next like, note, literally. I just thought it was really cute that he's like, I'm going to make him jealous. Matchmaker, make, make me a match. match. Find me a find. Ow. I, um, catch me a catch. I love that he touches her face. It's very Victorian. But my next note after that is that I would watch a whole show of Emmett and Edward matchmaking. Yes. Because that whole scene it is the best. Was hysterical. Uh-huh, it's hilarious. so good. I loved it. I just thought they were so funny. And I love that Emmett's like, oh, Oh, but you know, doesn't she like that guy? Like it's all. And I love that Edward is like he's improvising now, but I'm gonna go (laughs) along with it. Go with it. It was just so good. In my picture of my mind of Emmett, you just know it's gonna be so off anyway. Like it's gonna be so over the top that (laughs) no one's gonna think he's a good actor. Yeah. It was still Noah Centineo in my head. That girl. Every time I read Emmett now, like that's who I see. I just see Noah Centineo like putting it on thick. Yeah. Um, and to go back to what you were saying about him touching her face, I also enjoy that while they're watching this movie that Edward is like every other teenage boy where he's like, do I hold her hand? Do, do I touch I, her? Do I, do I, do I, I not? Touch her? And they're oh, both just sitting know. there, arms crossed awkwardly. Because you know they're not sitting normally arm folded. They're just like, 
Um, also, did y'all know that there was a six inch height difference between Ben and Angela? No. no, that's never mentioned. I highlighted that too. That was never mentioned. And we saw it in the movies, but not like that, but not like that. And like, also, whoa, whoa. So yeah, like, right? I feel like what is like Ben, like five, two, and right? she's How like five, eight. I don't know. I don't know. But I just thought that was like a fun little nugget. And yeah. I was like, whoa. I just, Angela and Ben are the cutest. Because Ben's thoughts, like the few thoughts that we get from him were so adorable. He's like, what? What? That guy wants my girl? No, he can't have her. He can't have her. Uh, I like her. <laughs> I like her. He, I was imagining, I don't know if you guys have watched the newest seasons of Grey's Anatomy. Oh, yeah. But there's I've, I've an, watched all of it. Girl, the intern it. with the glasses, like the new oh, little very young uh-huh, guy, yeah, like very sweet. glasses and a body. Yes, guy. him. Mm-hmm. That's who I was picturing as Ben. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Right? Like, isn't he the perfect I Ben? I see it. That same type of energy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 1,000%. Um, and then Jacob, Jacob, and then Edward goes home to be yelled at for telling them yes. about the, her secret and about Jacob Black. And I'm just like, this is hilarious. And then, you know, Edward takes his place in the corner like a paralysis demon. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's like how I, you know, that yeah. meme of like, that's my paralysis that's demon. demon. Yeah, that's, that's who Edward, Edward is. is. I imagine, you know, you try to plug in your phone under the bed. <laughs> that like, and that like and hand. little hand to keep blocking that from doing it. Because he doesn't want to Edward doesn't want you to electrocute yourself. He wants you to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly oh who he is. God. And then, you know, we have another conversation. It's just all of Bella's favorite things. Um, so I have issues okay. with Bella and her favorite things. Oh, First of all. Dear. T- do tell. Nobody's favorite color is brown. So fuck both of you. No. Fuck you both. Honestly, though, one of my favorite brands. We might lose some listeners because they're going to be like, favorite, my favorite color is brown. One of my favorite LA brands, Big Bud Press. Shout out to Big Bud Big Press. Bud, Big Bud Press. Um, this Lacey, is our commercial her episode. Color <laughs> is brown. And I'm like, I get that. I like the color brown. I cannot wear it I because do. people always it's a nice naked. Neutral, right? It is a nice neutral tone. Yeah. There is there's room for neutrals. But like, no, she said her favorite color was brown because she misses the desert. And you're like, oh, my favorite color is brown, too. Your like, you're that, you're that boyfriend when you're like, what's your favorite TV show? Crazy Anatomy. Oh, oh me too. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, What's your Edward. favorite band? Linkin Park. Oh, me too. Uh, secondly, Bella said that she doesn't really like music. I was furious. I'm sorry. I was so angry. I don't trust people who don't like music. I just don't. I'm sorry. There's so much music out there. It's like there are two things that you can say that automatic, automatically make me suspicious of you as a human being when you're like, I don't like music or when you go, I don't like movies. You've seen every movie. You don't like any of them. Anybody? Not a single one appealed to you. Excuse yeah. me. Also, because there is no work in music. No. You know, you have to read a book. You have to pay attention to a show, you know, or mm-hmm. a movie. There's no work in music. You just listen. You just listen to it. Well, There's so much good music out there, too. Like, how can you not? Like, what are you doing with your spare time? Like, if you're driving down the freeway, what are you What are you doing? I mean, I've literally what made you, a Midnight Sun playlist. Right? We should post that. We're going to post We're gonna that. We're going to post that. <laughs> She's just, like, listening to uh, Jane Austen audiobooks. I, you know. I don't know. I think it's so uncomfortable and awkward. I, I don't get it. I didn't take reading it. reading these books and not listening to like some explosions in the sky or Brian Eno in the back? Right? Like, come on, Come girl. on, girl. I didn't take it the way that you guys did. I took it just kind of like the way that I kind of enjoy music is I like music when I hear it and friends share music with me, but I'm not a person who goes and seeks out new music. Then, but would you ever say the words, I don't like music? No, I wouldn't say that. Exactly. Word. exactly. And you People were in a girl say, group, Sarah. Yeah. You don't even pull that type of shit on this right? podcast. People who say, I don't like music, there's something wrong. There's period. Wrong. Okay. I'm sorry. Wrong. Right. I don't want to offend anybody. Like, it's please fine. give me your stance. Edward, as the person who literally, like, in our last podcast, wrote her a goddamn concerto right? On the he fucking did. piano. Yeah. He is a musician. And listen. You think a musician would ever be into someone who she, didn't like music? She doesn't like music, but she knows about Debussy? Get out of here. <laughs> Debussy. Did anybody tell us how to say that for real? I don't know. No I don't one know. Did. I'm, so gonna just I'm just saying, we're saying, it, we're saying it right. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, also, she loves black licorice which get out of my That's fucking disgusting. face it's I gross. like black so licorice gross. guys nasty you nasty I you're don't taste it out broken. but it's good okay? you're, nasty. you're nasty good and plenty is tasty no ma'am Mm-mm. good and no Mm-mm. hard pass <laughs> you guys don't like uh, Jaeger 
Oh God, no! Get out of here! I oh had one God. really bad. Like a fast Listen, track to ruining your life. It's so. I fun. had one really bad night in college that involved Jaeger bomb and piano, piano. Get out of my face! Get out! It's so fun. I can't believe but piano, piano so didn't get a larger fun. reaction out of you. I know. It was, bad things happen at piano, piano. For all of our listeners, piano, piano was one of the local bars where Kiki and I went to college, and bad things happened there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fish <laughs> anyway. bowls. Oh my Fish bowls Back to the buck. Back to the book. Um, Billy Black freaks out that Edward is at Bella's house. Yes. I mentioned that earlier. He has a lot of thoughts. Cold one. (laughs) Uh, Vampire. Vampire. What? I don't remember why I wrote this, but I had a note that says, not everybody is rich, Edward. Yeah. So I don't I don't remember why I wrote that down, but Edward just maybe Jacob oh. marveling at his car. Oh, maybe. No, I, I think know. it was about when Bella was talking about how she didn't travel that much, and he was oh, so and he shocked. Was like so shocked. Oh. He was so She's shocked. Never been like, anywhere. She has so much life to live. I'm like, not everybody's rich, Edward. Yeah. I didn't go on a plane until I was in college. Like, come on, get over yourself, bro. See, I just thought we all have that white friend who travels yeah. so much. Yeah, and you're like, where the fuck do you get this money because yeah. i saved right i, I saved for my trips or do you just like travel yeah and, no like, lax travel like stay in shitty places because when i vacation i ball out of control right which is why i save to vacation yeah. no like it just it puts me there. not everybody's rich edward also there were some great author call outs when she was talking about her favorite books and i just want to shout out robin mckinley one of mm. my favorite writers mm-hmm. wrote a couple of my favorite books adaptations of beauty and the beast check her out hey good job bella i love it um, Edward goes home to have a heart to heart with his mommy, and I thought that was lovely. He has his little heart to heart with Esme, and yes. then with and Alice, and has a little bit of foreshadowing towards what the, happens to well, Bella and the New Moon. End of his heart to heart with Esme when Esme is like, "I want to love her too." Like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Esme, you. Sweet I also baby. like that in this book we are humanizing the vampires. Yes, baby bit. Mm-hmm. You know, we are hearing that. Hey, the way they live is like out of the norm for other yeah. vampires. But also, out of their norm is being normal, yeah. like us. You yes. know, having a mom and a dad and someone to look up to and aspire to, yeah. and siblings that you can't stand and that you love to death. You yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, and then we get into chapter fourteen, and chapter fourteen is just another long chapter, very dense about things that Bella's into. But I will say that all these added conversations. I do appreciate them in that they're humanizing Bella more, but also it makes more sense why Edward is so wanting to hold on to that tiny thread, that tiny knot yeah. that Bella might stay human. Yes. And I did appreciate that, especially when you find out that she wanted to go to college and be an, a professor, a teacher, or an editor. Or yeah. Like she wanted to do, you know, like, you know she did have. She has dreams. She and has dreams and aspirations and goals, and that's why it makes sense more sense why Edward was yeah. so keen on keeping her human, because so she didn't lose out on those yeah. things. And chapter fifteen, I think, is the best chapter of the lot, and that is when Edward and Alice go hunting, and he and yeah. her are having a very serious conversation about Bella and about the options, because Alice is like, "Look, you want to take her to this meadow? That's where I saw you kill her." Yeah. However. That it's a giant knot with a multiple frayed ends. Yeah. You could go either way. There's so many ways that this could happen. It's 60-40 right now. Like, figure it out, bro. Figure it, out, figure it you, out. And it's because you won't make a decision. And you might not be able to make a decision until you're there. But just know one of them is that you will kill her. Another option yeah. is, hey, you could turn her. Hey. Hey. And he's like, no. And she's like, and then there is the one faintest option yeah and he shows she shows him what bella looks like as an adult yeah mm-hmm. and which I'm again like, wow. it makes these things are all making sense as to why he was so vehemently opposed to turning her because mm-hmm. he knows that there are other options yes. as unlikely as they may be i thought it and was, i i did love yeah. like you said she she sees what's going to happen when he leaves a new moon and she's like you can't leave i see that too yeah. and bella is messed up yeah at first i thought it might have been like when she was pregnant and i was like oh no that's new moon that's, that's when new she's moon depressed. that's when she's messed up and i thought that um alice saying i thought this was really heavy alice is like look you could leave but you will come back and it'll be to hunt her yeah, yeah. So figure it out. That's bruh. what it'll. Be. That's your option. Yeah. He's. She's also very much like you. Just have to make it through this yeah. crisis. And, and is that crisis the meadow, or is there? Do you think it's something else? I think that's it's the meadow. I think he just is having a crisis see, of conscience. I wasn't sure if it was like the meadow or if it was him leaving her and coming back. Mm. And I was yeah. like, oh, he did it because he knew that it bought her more time as yeah. a human being. Right. Also wrote down a note about Bella. Um, Edward describes women very curvy 
He does. Edward, do you? He's like, such a Victorian. Do you like? Do you like <laughs> thick oh, bitches? We got two C's. Like- <laughs> thick with two C's. <laughs> thick with two C's. Yeah, because uh, we get a little flashback while Edward's sitting in her room again, um, of him with. Carlisle and I love yeah. this little story it's like their first yeah, Christmas little story with together Siobhan. yeah right it's Christmas. adorable uh, and no let's finish the scene and I'll, I'll say my side note okay. it's not important uh, go for it I'm just being a bitch go ahead that's fine <laughs> um but yeah so basically after talking with Alice he goes to, uh, to Bella's because he knows he's going to the meadow he's like if I sniffer enough the burning I'll get used to it yeah um and then he has this little story of his first Christmas with Carlisle and how he like meets who is it the Siobhan Irish Siobhan and, the and, other he's, ones. and he's like damn damn Wait, like she's taller than your average woman she's <laughs> curvier than your average woman I was she like, thick with two C's thick, thick with two C's yeah I heard, I saw Sarah <laughs> <laughs> Just I know this is the podcast. You guys can't hear anything, but Sarah's 5'9". 5'10". 5'10". She's 5'10", and she's thick ten. with two Cs. And she's thick with two Cs. She's got, like, you know, the butt you see from the front. <laughs> so when he was describing Siobhan, I was like, oh, Ooh, she damn. Oh, oh, my God. Sarah's in his book. <laughs> Siobhan means Sarah in whatever language this is. Yeah, I think it's like Scottish. That's Gaelic. Yeah. Um, back to the book. Anyway, back but to the the, book. you learn that Siobhan was the catalyst for Edward defec- deflecting from Carlisle. Yeah. Like, and he goes off to be Ripper. I'm stealing that from Vampire Diaries. Yeah, he goes off to his Ripper self <laughs> because Siobhan says, like, oh, it's the most the <laughs> most beautiful joy we'll know in this life. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he, he he's like, he's like chasing a high. Like yeah. someone has described to him what heroin is like. So he keeps trying to like get the good high and he just never, he never finds it. He never finds it. Will this make me feel good? And he's happen. like, this doesn't, this isn't it for me. And, you know, and at this point, we're now going to head to the meadow for chapter 16. And Edward's about 70, 30, 70, 30. You know, uh, but he might not kill her. So things, odds are in his favor. Two small things that I took notes on. And one is actually factual is that we do find out why the Cullens wear so much goddamn khaki. Okay. Alice dresses all of the Cullens. She chooses all of their clothes. Mm-hmm. Uh, she does all their shopping and she does her best to keep them uh, trendy and whatnot. Yes. But one of the reasons they wear so much light clothing is so the colors of their clothing won't contrast with their pale skin. Okay, fair. So it makes sense. It I still hate in. it. I still think it's, it's dumb. Still dumb. They could just get away with saying that they're fair skinned and move on, but whatever. Yeah. Um, I just kind of wish that the Cullens had jobs. Like, I know that the teenagers are quote unquote teenagers. Yeah. So they go to school, but like. And Carla's a doctor and Esme's a stay at home mom. Esme's a quote unquote stay at home mom, but she's always up in her room, like drafting designs. She could sure, be. She could be uh, an architect. She could be Joanna Gaines, okay? Yeah. She Chip really and could. Joanna. Yeah. She could have her own show. It would last forever because she don't age. That's like, true. Listen, HGTV starring Esme Cullen. Um, also, <laughs> my just bitchy note was that. So it before Edward does his more stalking. Mm-hmm. He listens to what's going on in the house and Bella blow dries her hair before she goes to yeah. bed and listen as a black woman. Bella, why are you wasting time blow drying your hair when you're not even going to wrap it before you go to bed? I know, girl. <laughs> listen, if you're going to blow dry it, you better put that satin bonnet on it. She's just blow drying it and laying down, letting it get all knotted and messed up. Girl, yeah. that was a waste of time. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wrap it. I just blow dry it and Sarah! leave it alone. But that's why it's frizzy, though. See, it ain't frizzy, bitch. Sarah, I'm getting you a satin bonnet. You're going to learn. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn. All right. Well, then chapter 16, Edward steps into the sun. (sighs) And that is, it's just a whole chapter of him leading up to his nerves and showing Bella his skin. But not in a sexy way. Wait, not in a sexy way. In the most boring way possible. That's literally all that happens. No, I was like, it's the next chapter. That's my favorite part in the movie. Yeah. Well, you can't talk about it. I know. We'll talk about it next week. Yeah. So yeah, uh, guys, you guys, this was a lot. A lot of Edward and his thoughts. He just talks so much. He just much. talks so much. It's so dense. It usually takes me like 20 minutes a yeah. chapter. And this book, it takes me like 40 minutes a chapter. It's so it, much. It's entertaining seeing things from his point of view because we are getting more depth to the story. Yes. But at the same time, Jesus Christ, I couldn't do this with all four books. No. Oh I my could gosh. not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I understand Stephanie Meyer not wanting to now. I was like, no, no I get yeah. it. I get it now. It's too much. Girl, why live in this world any longer? Yeah. We too got much. it. We understand it. We're good. I wish she would have taken some of that, him alone with his thoughts, and put it with him and his family. Like, yeah. him working it out with Carlisle. Him working it out with Esme. Like, I would have rather but, that. But in her writing style, I don't want that because it would just be more of like, Carlisle smiled, Esme smiled, Jackie smiled, John John smiled, oh Peter smiled, God. Tommy smiled. <laughs> Everybody's true. fucking smiling. That's true. very true. <laughs> You're not wrong. But it is a chance to educate people on how to, like, properly... 
work through feels, not stalk someone. Not and stalk sit someone. in their room like a paralysis <laughs> demon. Edward. 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 Hello, Edward. Ugh. Yeah. Okay, so next week. Next week. <laughs> yeah. We'll be reading chapters 17 through 20 something. We'll 20 decide. something. We'll figure it out. Um, we probably another, what, was it like seven chapters we try to do? So. Yeah. Um, 17 through 24 ish. We'll go with that. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> But yeah, until then, you guys let us know what book you want us to jump into next. Because we're almost done. We're almost done. Uh, We need a break. (laughs) I know. I need a mental break. It's all good. Uh, But until then, fork off. Fork Fork off. off. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Later. If you want to know what the fork is up, head on over to our streamer links page at streamerlinks.com slash smells like teen angst to follow all our personal social media and pages.